Hey, I'm Cyclone, and with Scourge coming to an end, and Arch Nemesis and Siege of the Atlas on the horizon, or at least their reveal, I wanted to give my final conclusion on the Scourge League and the events we had in December. The Scourge I was pretty hyped when it was released, I really looked forward to it, I was expecting it to really have an impact on the market being okay there are going to be so many uniques that are going to get taken from the market, everybody is going to corrupt and scourge the items, those modifiers are going to throw builds on the absolute next level and sadly it did not deliver on that. But the leak mechanic inside the map was super awesome. Scourge in map was quite fun, it just added a second layer on the map it, where for some new enemies to kill and the bosses were quite interesting too. It gave new specters to choose, uh, it's an option to choose utility specters and maybe even damage specters so those will not be able to be further uh, further tested with as Scourge is going to leave us at least temporarily and it, I don't know, the the, the Forge the Crucible was lagging. You had to farm a lot to get all the points. I played almost all league, you weren't able to get it full, but the map was. So if I would have to give Scourge a rating, I guess it would be a 3 out of 5 as it delivered as a league mechanic in map, but the reward it gave was just non-existent outside of the huge quantifier you had and the Scourge maps, which I will come to now. The Scourge maps, I take a, a bit separate, we had Scourge, we had the Crucible and we had the Scourge maps. And with the Scourge maps they were fun enough, they were interesting enough, but the meta became that the Scourge map didn't care what map tier you were running them on. It had no effect on them, as far as I know at least. So you could run T2s and there were not really a challenge at that point, so it was really just the Scourge map 2t10 did got good modifiers, yay, you got value, run it or sell it, or uh, junk, let's throw it away. It was interesting enough, but I think it was just lacking the final step to be a really amazing league. It didn't offer the, the corrupting on items, and it didn't really offer that much of a challenge. I mean, the meta pretty much at the end for Scourge was either run the few Scourge maps that are really good, on low tier and get the profit from there, or use it with a quantity farming on top of delirium farming and try to farm out their uh, farm with that. Where that delivered, but it wasn't really Scourge that delivered, it was just Scourge added on an existing t uh, strategy. So, it, yeah, Scourge w missed the final step to be really good. And lastly, I guess we have the Tainted Currencies, which I actually forgot for a moment. And I was really hoping we would keep them in standard. Uh, not the, as in, okay, we can keep the currency we got in this league, but it's going to go core. So that at least the Tainted Fusings and the Tainted, uh, yeah, the Tainted Fusings, Tainted Jewelers, those were really awesome and they were enabled a lot of b players to be early in their builds with the six link. Normally six links were a few exalts, um, but with this league it was quite a lot less exalts that were needed to get this far, which I really liked. So you could get niche uniques were, was um, a bit because people weren't mass six linking them, but the uniques that a lot of people were asking were still at a reasonable price because people were mass producing them, so they, uh, there was at some point even more um, supply than demand. So I really liked that. Personally, in Scourge, I spent a lot of time trying to get to these Rave 30 Simulacrum. I did a lot of stuff. I did um, the bosses again, I did different mapping strategies. You all were able to see my progress through the different strategies that I did. It was a lot of fun, but in the end, I still wasn't able to do the Rave 30 Simulacrum, which got my took a lot of momentum away from me. It really bumped my motivation to push further. And after I failed a high investment craft, or not failed, I just gambled and I lost the gamble. Uh, I just wasn't really interested in pushing out the last bit of the league. So, but now with uh, Arch Nemesis coming, I am really hyped up again. I think next league is going to be awesome. 
uh, if we just take a look at Echoes of the Atlas and Conqueror of the Atlas, both were really amazing leagues for me. I had a lot of fun with them. So I'm looking forward to that. My motivation is coming back and I will put out more content in the following league for the different builds that I've already played on new builds. You can expect an Aurobot update, you can expect a league starter, hopefully, and you can expect strategy videos. And so on that. But now let's talk a bit about the events. We had uh, different events. We had, let's categorize them as Delph and Heist, the alternative gameplay events. We had the Atlas Enhanced events where we had Atlas Invasion and Delirium. And then we had the Gauntlet. I was not partaking in the PvP. I'm not that good in it. So I just said, uh, okay, I'm not gonna do that. And the Gauntlet, I did try. I finished Act 1. But I, my motivation was still so low at that point that I did not push further than uh, Act 1. So I wasn't really having that much fun in the gauntlet. But I did play all the other events at least up to a level 70 character if I remember correctly. Delph and Heist were okay. They were quite tedious to get to the leveling. It wasn't the most fun part but it was still okay. Yeah, I did finish my leveling in highs before the nerf, so that was uh, before the buff, not nerf, so that was questionable. But it was okay enough and fun enough as events. I still like the normal leveling in the campaign over delve or heist leveling, just because it's a bit more active and not just kill, 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 because that feels is just what Diablo is, and I moved on from that game because it was just killing and repeating the same steps. It, it lacked the diversity that PoE is offering. And then we had Atlas Invasion and Delirium, and I thought those were really awesome. The Delirium area was quite hard. I ended up making a spreadsheet for it, uh, knowing every zone to share with you guys, if you have watched that and if it was helpful. I, I don't know really know where I wanted to go with that sentence. Sorry for that. I, I did the spreadsheet, it was okay. I wished I would have known the spreadsheet before I did it because it would have made it a lot easier. I ran a few maps and then I decided, yeah, okay. i am got enough of this. I'm going to play some other games and recharge my motivation for Pass of Exile as it was the final event. But Atlas Invasion, I pushed up to red maps and I, I've learned something really good in there which I will cover in a, a different video uh, just about that own thing in coming this week. This one will be um, before that. But Atlas in Invasion, I pushed quite quickly, quite, quite far, played through the night, had a lot of fun killing the bosses. I was expecting a bit more. I was expecting the bosses to respect their own special drop rule and uh, the market being flat was very in interesting uniques very early on or the high value uniques very early on. Sadly that did not happen. They were just excuse me, uh, just random uniques and it wasn't that interesting. But overall it was still fun. I played the double there. It was an okay build. And if it does not get nerfed I think it's going to dominate the next league, especially because we're going to get a league with a focus on new bosses and whatever they're going to bring to the Atlas. I will uh, look forward to the patch note on that one. I think that was really all there was about the last leaks. Now, we do not know a lot about Echoes of the Atlas and the Arch Nemesis leak. Arch Nemesis could be based on Nemesis, so they could finally, maybe, potentially, um, do something that I was hoping they do uh, way earlier, that they take a leak mechanic and enhance it. Put something new on top of an old one. When Ritual came out, my first thought was, okay, they're going to change the shrines. As we just had the teasers where we saw the uh, shrine circles. And I thought, okay, so what if you go to a shrine, you cannot instantly click on it, it doesn't do its normal effect, but you, uh, you kill the enemies around it, then you get the shrine effect. You can just take the shrine effect and go on, or you can click on it again, and then you start the ritual mechanic. I thought that would have been really interesting. So ritual would be something that is um, adding on top of an old leak mechanic and you will just have it when the is, or you can skip out of it with no real loss. Um, so you would uh, trade um, potential loot and time or you could uh, say, okay, I'm going to do it. 
and it would perfectly fit into the old system and it would not be a mechanic that is added on top of all there is already. Um, so now that we have Arch Nemesis and we already had the Nemesis League, it could be that Arch Nemesis might be a new way to interact with the Nemesis League and it's going to directly replace it and give something new instead that is a bit more modern and using the new development techniques GG is able to use because of technology advancement. Could be really amazing, but I guess we will see that on next week's Thursday. And with that, I guess I wanted to mention one last thing about Siege. Siege of the Atlas, right now I'm not sure what exactly will be. We could get an Uber Maven fight, that is one of my theories. The different one would be that the Lightkeeper is the, uh, is the final boss. It's, I guess it's going back to the four Guardians into one big boss. But I hope that we're going to get a different stages, that the Guardians themselves are ready. Are not like normal Guardians, but are ready on the level of Cyrus. And then we have the big boss on the level of Maven, and then we get an Uber Maven. That would be really amazing, but I, I don't know if I expect too much out of, uh, of that, and that would maybe ramp up the difficulty way too, uh, in way too many, way too high steps. Uh, so we will have to wait and see for that too. That was really all I wanted to say about the last league scourge and the upcoming leagues, my series there, or my current series, I guess. If you're curious now, I will just uh, talk a, a quick moment about what you can expect here on the channel. I already um, uh, talked a bit about it earlier, but now a bit more detail. So I, I want to put out more videos, more build guides. I want to show... Um, continue the aura board it's really a lot of fun playing that or playing with one i think not a lot of people are able to uh, because they just see the aura boards on screen uh, in in big groups and big groups is just one part of aura botting or support player group play there's duo there's double carries i think there is not a whole lot of content about that i want to bring out some more content in that direction I want to further discover my own strats or take my opinion on strats that are very popular in the league just to um, just to try them out at one point uh, in one take and then to uh, kind of learn for the future hey is it worth it to do that again to make currency to fund big builds as I still have not made a build that has one or more mirror tier items which is still a goal of my own and yeah I think that is all about I wanted to talk. With that being said, have a great day.